This podcast includes adult language and graphic depictions of murders and criminal acts. This is a comedy-style true crime podcast. We do our best not to make fun of victims or victims' families. However, we do introduce our sense of humor while telling graphic stories. If the mix of comedy and true crime is not your thing, this may not be the right podcast for you. Audience discretion is advised. True crime stories about serial killers can be creepy and frightening. Mm. What's scarier than a true crime story about a serial killer, Mike? A uh, story about a uh, serial killer. What makes us peek around dark corners? Makes the hair on our arms stand on end? Because we've got to see what's on the other side. <laughs> How about stories about serial killers who have not been caught yet? Ooh, that's different. On today's episode, we'll be talking about 10 serial killers who are still out there. And stay tuned to the end because we'll be playing the Wheel of Death with a lucky contestant. Lock your doors, sit back, and hold on for this episode of Two Murder Morons. <laughs> And welcome to the show. My name is Andy, and sitting across from me, as always, is my good buddy Mike. Hello. I feel like when we, I feel like when we say "Hey," yeah, we're like in a like a pizza place, like you're, like we're Mario, and <laughs> like we're a, like, yeah, it's a me, it's I'm a, Mario. Yeah, me. <laughs> so I'm like, who ordered the pepperoni calzone? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not gonna try the, the voices, but anyway, okay, yeah. all right. Well, welcome to the show. This is uh, Two Murder Morons. That's it. Welcome aboard. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. Welcome. If if you've been around for a while, welcome back. Welcome back. A special thank you real quick to our executive producers and all our Buy Me a Coffee members. Yes. Uh, they really make the show possible. That is a big, yeah. yes. So if you're interested in becoming a producer, go to buymeacoffee.com slash Two Murder Morons or click the QR code on your screen. That's down here. It's down, down. Yeah, yeah I put, down I'll here. put it down there later. Make sure you put it down there. Uh, real click, 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 real click, real click, real quick disclaimer. Uh oh, go on disclaimer. You know what's coming. I, I hate being on that damn error board. Here we go. We're about to start talking about some photographs. So if you are listening to the show right now, be sure to check out our video episode on YouTube or Spotify. Or if you like listening, that's cool too. Just because, uh, because we are a video. Podcast. That's right. Primarily a video podcast. So yes. don't think we're jerks if you're listening and you're like, why are these asshats talking about photographs? I can't see them. Well, you can when you get home. Well, yeah. Watch us again. Yeah. Right? Also, right now is a good time to like, subscribe, click that notification bell so you get notified when a new episode comes out. Give us five stars. But, yeah. Yeah, we appreciate Give it. Give us a good review. We're going to be awesome. We're worth it. Hell yeah, we are. Damn right. Hell yeah. Yeah. Duh. By now, we are. <laughs> I, God damn. Yeah. Also, we need to announce this again. Coming up, we're doing our first ever live, live stream. stream. It's our season two finale airing September 18th, 7 p.m. <laughs> Eastern. It's going to be a shit show. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're interested in seeing a train wreck happen live. Yes. Tune Join in. in. <laughs> September yes. 18th. This was my idea, too, by the way. It was. He, he's been begging. I, I, I figured we got two seasons under, under yeah, our belt. Yeah, yeah, why not? Let's try it. We're we're doing okay right now doing yeah. the show. I think we're a little more comfortable with it. I think so. We still have our nights, but it happens. I think it should be a good, uh, be an interesting, be, be a good experience, interesting thing. Yeah, yeah. We'll even let Jack answer some questions. Ooh, really? Yeah. Since he's a little dick over there in the corner. Well, he's down here. Yeah. He's, he's digging a hole to China. I'm still. not. I'm not letting him do the intro over again. He, he knows we're talking about him. I know he does. <laughs> Yeah, he's kind of a jerk when he hey, did the Hey, what an ass, man. What an ass <laughs> hat. I was like, Jesus, man. Seriously? God. Oh, man. So what do you think? Should we get with this going? Get it undid. All right. All right. Um, this comes to us from a June 6, 2024 How Things Work article. Have you ever been to HowThingsWork.com? No, not really. It's kind of a cool All website. Right. Uh, it was. It's titled 10 Serial Killers Who Have Never Been Caught, and it's by Susie Dudas and Nick Steinberg. Dudas? Dudas. D-U-D-A-S. Do anyway, that, like do da da, like well, let's not make fun of her. I mean, I was just, <laughs> count down, like is it like that? I don't, I don't think so at all. Okay, <laughs> don't all right. think so at all. Okay, I'm just checking. But I will put the link to their article that we're going to be reading parts of and talking about. It'll be in the description if you want to 
Check them out. Give them some love. Yeah, I just need a little clarification, like rock yeah. and a sock, that kind of stuff. Oh, Jesus. We're going to get back into the rock and a sock thing? Oh, I'm just saying. Okay. <laughs> Got to get clarification. Oh, Lord. What's the other ones you did? Oh, uh, it don't matter. What? Rock and a sock. Sock and a rock. Rock in, in yeah. a sock. I know. We, don't, we clarified that. Okay. Uh, many times. We need to get a shirt that says rock and a sock or sock and a whatever. I, I'll have it up on the website by the time this rock, airs. Rock and a sock. I'll put a picture of it right here. Do you want a rock and a sock? You can have a rock and a sock. Wait, let me get, do that again. Rock <laughs> and a sock. <laughs> like holding jugs. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. okay. Well, let's jump into the story here. Let's go. Holy cow. All right. Now, this is the babysitter killer, which I know. <laughs> not mine. Not, not yours. Did. Okay. Not Christine Falling. Right. I know we just did an episode called yeah. the babysitter killer. Yeah. This apparently also is the babysitter killer. Oh, more than one. Um, also known as the Oakland County Child Killer. Okay. Um, Oakland he's, County. He's an unidentified serial killer who murdered at least four children in Oakland County, Michigan, hmm. between 1976 and 1977. Man, I need to find that fucker. His alias comes from the fact that he bathed each child before committing the crimes. Okay. Which led FBI profilers to... Uh, come up with that the killer had some sort of twisted parental instinct. Like an OCD deal, maybe? I don't know. That's that's messed up to me. Yeah. Uh, the killer's choice to target children gripped parents throughout Michigan. I, I would I would assume so. Oh, I'm, I'm yeah. sure people were freaking out. Well, yeah, in those days, because that was like, that's, just, that's the time this shit really started happening in the right. U.S. Yeah. So, yeah. So, it, it freaked parents out in Michigan. It spawned dozens of neighborhood watch initiatives. Yeah. Uh, despite a few promising leads, including the discovery of a vehicle suspected to belong to the killer, the case remains open and unsolved. The most recent development was in 2012 when investigators managed to create a DNA profile of well, the killer. So, they got that. Well, you know, it, why don't they do the gene genealogy? Yeah. DNA. Go through the family. Yeah. Well, they got the DNA, DNA profile, but it didn't match anyone arrested in conjunction with the case or anyone in the police system sure. for that matter. But they could have, now they could do this DNA do through the, the genealogy thing. Right. They got to try that. I, it just my two cents. Yeah. Um, apparently, the most disturbing part about this, aside from the fact that the killer's still at large and it was well, children, yeah, is the extent, the length of time these abductions took place. All four children were held from anywhere from four to 19 days before being bathed and killed. Jesus. So this, this dude, uh, still out there. And yet again, he okay. kind of looks like someone we know. He does. Why yeah. is it every episode, the <laughs> damn criminals look like people? I don't know. It's weird. I don't know. Maybe it's just the way we look at, that's our perception. I, I guess. This guy, he's got to have more. More. I mean, that guy's got to have, have done more. Oh, probably. That's just probably the ones they know, uh, you know. Yeah, I know. It just, that just makes me sick. He's a bastard. All right. The Highway of Tears killer mm -hmm. or killers. We don't really, don't don't really, really know. know. Yeah. While the modern day serial killer may be thought of primarily a U.S. phenomenon, Jack the Ripper notwithstanding, Canada has had its fair share of heinous murders as well, including more than a few that remain unsolved. Perhaps the most infamous are the Highway of Tears murders in British Columbia. Oh. The highway is a 450-mile or 724-kilometer stretch of highway 16 between Prince George and Prince Rupert. Wow. And has the unfortunate designation of being the site of at least 18 and possibly as many as 40 Jesus. murders or disappearances between 1969 and 2011. Is it mostly kids? Mostly indigenous women. Uh, we, need to, we need to look into this. Yes. That is a big subject. Yes. Since the murder spanned 50 years, investigators believe multiple killers were patrolling the highway. Mm -hmm. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police, or the RCMP, found only enough evidence to prosecute one of the murders, leaving the other 17 cases unsolved. That's big over here, too. Yeah. Yes, around reservations. Unfortunately, investigators have included the perpetrator's whereabouts over the decades in question mean he could only be responsible for two of the other killings at most, the one they caught. Okay. So it's likely that the other killer or killers remain at large. Not traveling on that highway anytime soon. No. No way. 
You know who this guy is? Well, uh, it's a police rendering. Th- this is Bible John. Bible John? Yeah. You okay. ever heard of Bible John? Never heard of Bible John. Nope. So, Bible Bill. Spurring Scotland's most extensive manhunt. Scotland. Scotland. That's why I never heard of it. Well, well, I don't know. In your research, I thought, okay, well, no, no. Maybe you came across the story of Bible John. Mm -mm. The answer to who exactly is Bible John has shifted over the years, but the serial killer's identity has remained a mystery. In the 50-something years since the murders of Patricia Docker in 1968 and Jemima, J-E-M-I-M-A, Jemima, Jemima, Jemima? McDonald, and Helen Puttcock, Puttick, P-U-T-T-O-K. I don't know where I got the cock part. Puttock. 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 Oh, that makes Scottish. Yeah. Puttock. 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 Helen Puttock. Puttock in the hole. Terrible Puttock accent. In the, Puttock in the hole. Um, all these women were in their late 20s or early 30s. All three victims were beaten and raped before their murders after meeting the killer at the same popular Glasgow nightclub, the Barrowland Ballroom. Hmm. Sounds like a happening place. Sounds like it. The few details known in the case came from Helen Puttock's sister, Jean, who shared a taxi with her sister and the supposed killer on the night of Helen's murder. Jean's information helped investigators form a psychological profile of the killer, who supposedly made frequent references to the Bible. Okay. Hence his nickname. Bible. Unfortunately, Jean died in 2010, and as she was the only witness associated with the case, the chances of finding the true identity of Bible John are now next to nothing. Another one got away with it. I know. There's a lot of them out there. Well, or they got picked up on something else. Yeah, true. This one is the Alphabet Killer. Mm-hmm. The Alphabet murders occurred in the early 1970s in Rochester, New York. Mm-hmm. The killer's alias comes from his choice of victims. He only chose victims, all of whom were young girls, with first and last names beginning with the same letter. Letter. The alphabet killer's three victims were each raped and strangled, and while there were several witnesses, including several motorists, who saw 10-year-old Carmen Cullen, Cullen? Cologne? Uh, yeah. C-O-L-O-N? Carmen yeah, Cullen, Cullen? Cullen? Yeah. So several motorists saw her half-naked on the side of the road attempting to escape from the killer. Why oh, didn't wow. any of them stop? Because they never do. <sighs> well... Because of that, police have never been able to close the case. Exactly. However, police did have several persons of interest in the case, one of whom was connected as recently as 2011. However, none of the four men considered by authorities could be linked to the crimes. Though one was sentenced to death for the murder of sex workers in Nevada. Interestingly, all of his victims also had alliterative names. A-L-L-I-T-E-R-A-T-I-V-E. Alliterative? Should have been alternative, maybe. I don't know, alternate. Well, I'm thinking, is this alliterative? Is that what it's called when your name has the same letter, first and last? Well, maybe it is. Get it, morons, man. Morons. Oh, Mike's looking it up. It's Google time. It's a literary device that involves two, two or more words that appear close together and have the same initial okay. stressed consonant, consonant syllable. Okay. Good grief and red rose. Yeah, so we're, yeah. Same yeah, thing. Same thing. Gotcha. Gotcha. Right, okay, yeah. cool. Sorry about that. No, it's it's all good. The West Mesa Bone Collector. How about that? How about that for a name? Yeah. Mm. With a nickname that seems as much made for a movie poster as a police investigation. That's true. That sounds like a movie right there. Yeah. The West Mesa Bone Collector. Yeah. Uh, maybe currently active in the town of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Oh, okay. Or anywhere else for that matter, according to this article. Okay. The mysterious killer hit the spotlight in 2009 when police found 11 bodies buried in an area of Albuquerque called West Mesa. Following a tip that a woman had noticed a human femur bone partially uncovered in a former construction site, police excavated the area and discovered the bodies of women who'd been reported missing in 2003 and 2005. Wow. Wow. However, there are at least 13 other missing women who may also potentially have been victims of the West Mesa Bone Collector. Reportedly, uh, reported missing as recently as 2006. So, why do you get the name Bone Killer or Bone? What is it? Bone Collector. So, he would collect bones? 
Well, I just think because it took so long to find when they oh, dug okay. up, all they dug up was bones. bones so true. they just, you know, yeah. bone collector. Sorry, I, I've been up all night. It's, it's all good. Doing research. Yeah, for the show. I get so, it. Yeah. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Police considered several suspects but lacked enough evidence to make a strong case against anyone. Recent theories have suggested that the West Mesa bone collector may actually be multiple people running a sex trafficking ring. Possible. Possibly. Possibly. That's such a big thing now. Um, they believe this because many of the victims were involved in sex work. Okay. Yeah. As recently as 2021, police confirmed that the case is still active, though despite police receiving only uh, or receiving roughly rather 20 to 30 tips per year, no new evidence has moved the case along. The reward for useful information is currently one hundred thousand dollars. Wow. That case needs to be solved. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, somebody needs to be uh, burned bad for that. This is the story of the Servant Girl Annihilator. That's another name, isn't it? Servant Girl Annihilator. That's yeah. like a movie. I know, Character. right? Yeah. One of America's first known serial killers, the Servant Girl Annihilator, as he was called in the, um, you know, in the time. Yeah, in the time. Victorian era time, yeah. Killed seven women and one man in Austin, Texas, between December 1884 and December 1885. They're talking a long time ago. Yeah, they are. All the victims were domestic staff. So, okay. servants. Servants, yeah. Um, either killed while sleeping or dragged out of their beds and killed outside their homes. Wow. In just one night, Christmas Eve of 1885, the killer murdered three victims with an axe a signature that earned him his more politically correct nickname, the Austin Axe Murderer. Yeah, he's a sick bastard. Yeah. Because the case was nearly 125 years ago, <laughs> police records are obviously spotty. Yeah. Though a New York Times article from December 26, 1885, wrote that more than 400 people had been arrested in conjunction with the case. 400? Jesus, man, he brought everybody in? Modern researchers, <laughs> yeah, the whole town. Yeah, brother, all the guys didn't interview them. We know it's got to be one of you. Yeah, it's one of you. Modern researchers have suggested that the Austin Axe murderer may be none other than Jack the Ripper himself. Ah. That's interesting. Yeah. Who sent Londoners into a panic just three years earlier, or I'm Could, sorry, three years later in 1888. So did he live in Austin, Texas first? I don't know. Who's to, who's to uh, say? I know, right? That's... Interesting theory there. Yeah. I mean, it's a boat ride. But realistically, yeah. the true servant girl annihilator was likely local Nathan yeah. Elgin. Oh. Who only had four toes on one foot. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just we're getting into the, the nine toed man. Did this they, is what they only have nine toes in the crime scene. I get the dirt. <laughs> Ma matching footprints found at most of the murder scenes. There you go. Maybe that's why. So they, okay, so hang on. <laughs> Get this straight. So at the murder scenes, they have footprints, and the killer's obviously missing a toe. They still had to interview 400 people. Yeah, well, maybe it took, them, maybe it has, took that many people to get to him. Oh, maybe man. He's going to have, like, one toe missing. Uh, Elgin, the suspect, was killed by police officer John Bracken in 1886. Bracken shot him after responding to help a girl who'd been dragged from a saloon by a drunk man who was beating her. Which was obviously our man, Elgin. The girl's name was Julia. I think that's Julia here. Fortunately, given how long ago the crimes occurred, uh, duh, he's most certainly no longer operating. Yeah, yeah. Really, yeah. they had to put that in the... Yeah, well, you know. Make sure, make sure people understand. <laughs> people are freaked out right now. Well, like, could oh, be. You know, like, shit, man. Is this thing still going on? Maybe he passed it down to his family members. This is, this is an interesting... The Long Island Killer. I remember this. Because we have some recent news about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the aptly named Long Island, Island Killer is an unknown murderer who's been killing in New York since 1996 uh, to possibly the present. Now, here's a little map here. This is how close all these victims were found he lived, on this right? stretch. He lived there. Right, right. <laughs> Not too far. Uh, somewhere between 10 and 17 murders can be attributed to the Long Island killer. And since he may or may not still be operating, he's one of the most recent serial killers in America to remain at large. Author authorities knew very little about the suspect, speculating that he was likely a white male in his mid-20s to 40s with extensive knowledge of law enforcement operations and techniques, which would explain how he successfully avoided capture. 
Uh, though the Long Island killer has killed at least a dozen people, police were unaware that so many of the prior disappearances and murders were linked until the 2010 disappearance of Shannon Gilbert. Mm -hmm. While searching the area where she likely disappeared, police came across not just her body, but also 10 more victims buried under the sand on Long Island's Gilgo Beach. Is it Gilgo or Jilgo? Gilgo. Could you imagine that? Cop? Hey, uh, I'll just dig over here, see what I can find. Probably, it's probably nothing. And the next thing you know, you're all this. <laughs> yeah. You find 10 more bodies. Yeah. Jesus. Well, the rest, a lot of them were found by dogs. Right. Oh, yeah. Bringing dogs. Bring in the cadaver dogs. And, yeah. yeah. But the girl that, the girl that went to do that uh, call. Yeah. It was the escort. Do you know the story? No, tell, tell it. I don't, I'm not familiar with it. I can't remember her name, but anyway, there's a, there's a girl uh, that got called, called out to come to this place. So she had a driver. She's this guy to drive her everywhere. So he drove her, and um, he just sat in the car. And I guess after a while, a couple of hours go by, and this guy comes out and says, hey, you need to go inside and get, get your girl. She's, she's messed up, you know. And yeah. all of a sudden, she's running all over the place, like, you know, like kind of like if she was on a, some type of drug. Like maybe they drugged her. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. But anyway, she took off running, and she wouldn't stop for the, her driver. I mean, she just took off running. Yeah. And she's going up to houses screaming, help me, help me, help me. And, you know, of course, nobody opens their door. It's right, of it's course. Like four in the morning. Right. This day and age, no one gives a shit about yeah. each other. Yeah. So she got she got away from the driver. He didn't know where she went. And, of course, you know, her mom, her family wants to know, you know, and all of a sudden she goes, you know, reporter missing and all this stuff. And, you know, the driver said, this is the last place we went to. And that's how it kicked all this off. It kicked every yeah, because this isn't fair to have this on the list because we do have someone that's been arrested Correct. and charged. Yes. And that is Is that weird? This guy. Did you see his family? Oh, I know. Mm. Strange, strange, strange individual. Strange, strange. So in July of twenty three, so just last year, mm -hmm. a man named Rex Howerman? Yeah. H Hewerman? I think it's Howerman. Uh, was arrested for three of the murders associated with the Long Island killer case. In January 2024, he received a fourth charge, and in June of 24, two more charges were added. Mm -hmm. Hewerman has pleaded not guilty, and as of the time of this production, has not been convicted of any right. of these crimes. Right. But, but yeah, he's a he's like a um, he was a construction guy. He's like an architect. Yeah, like. I mean, like a bit, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. not like construction guy. No offense to construction. No, but yeah. But I'm just saying, like, this is like a suit wearing, high paid, yeah. like architect in New York, mm -hmm. which he, is crazy. And he lived out on that island. Right. And he lived like catty corner from where he, his first, first couple of murders were. Which, you know me, I'm not trying to make killers better, but how dumb to dump all your bodies well, in your backyard, you're basically. Right, but I, I mean, got away with it for how long? That's true. He did. I mean, he was probably, if it wouldn't have been for that one girl, I think he would have been scot free. And probably still yeah, doing this. Probably. Yeah. This right here is the Black Doodler. How about that for a name? The Doodler. The Black so obviously Doodler. He doodles. The, <laughs> the Doodler. Those sketches don't even match. I know. Those are terrible. Sketches. They are. I mean, the one looks like and it looks like a kid. <laughs> no, they don't look anything got, alike. And you got like Mr. Clean on the other side. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Clean, Mr. Clean. He does kind of look like Mr. Clean. He kind of has that, yeah. Oh, the doodler could perhaps have had a more flattering nickname. <laughs> yeah. Like, here's some that apparently fit. The artist or the sketcher. Yeah. Uh, the sketcher you don't, would be better. You don't want to be called the doodler. <laughs> no. No. It'd be like the Riddler. Um, had they say he may have gotten these names had he been kinder to the male models who posed for him? Okay, all right. So here's here's the issue. Okay, but instead he sexually assaulted and stabbed them, ultimately killing somewhere between six and fourteen victims in San Francisco. Wow, gay district, I take it. I don't know. Oh, from January 1974 to September 1975, several men disappeared from the city's gay community. Okay, yeah. And several more were injured or the victims of attempted murder. Wow. Though San Francisco has always been quite liberal, members of the LGBTQ plus community were generally not accepted into San Francisco's mainstream community in the 1970s. Correct. 
leading many of the killer's surviving victims to decline to cooperate with police for fear of being outed. Yeah. That's sad. Yeah, really. That was a time. Yeah. Unfortunately. As a result, there was very little information for authorities to go on, and the case remains open and unsolved. However, unlike many cases on this list, police may be close to solving this decades-old mystery. More victims have been willing to come forward in the last few years, and thanks to DNA and fingerprint evidence, authorities have said they've narrowed down a person of interest oh. who still resides in San Francisco. Okay. They're currently, uh, there is currently a $200,000 reward for anyone that helps them find the final pieces of evidence to prosecute the case. Good. Well, it's good. At least it's moving. It's made some, yeah. made some movement. Yeah. We know this guy. Oh, yeah. The Zodiac Killer. Zodiac. Yep. Thanks largely to the 2007 Jake Gyllenhaal and Robert Downey Jr. Mm-hmm. blockbuster Zodiac. Yep. The Zodiac Killer is perhaps the most infamous unsolved serial killer case in the United States. Much like Jack the Ripper did in London nearly a century prior, the Zodiac taunted police by sending investigators and the San Francisco Bay Area press cryptic messages and clues over a one-year period in the late 1960s. And this is his, uh, you know, a police sketch of what they think he looks like. And there's one of the letters with his little Zodiac symbol signature at the bottom. In a true game of cat and mouse... (laughs) Mike knows that term well. Oh, yeah. The killer made himself known to city residents by leaving clues at the murder scenes, threatening to shoot school buses full of children. Holy shit. Mailing pieces of victims' clothing to the San Francisco Chronicle newspaper. Okay. And threatening the public um, if newspapers didn't publish the cryptic letters that became his landmark. Oh, wow. As of 2022, only two of the killer's four ciphers, which he demanded be published in the paper, um, or he would have more victims yeah. have been definitively solved. So he sent four of these letters, only two of them. They figure out what the hell they're talking about. Okay. Police first opened the case in 1969 after the double murder of two high schoolers parked at a lover's lane. Oh, okay. Five murders have been definitely linked to the case, though the Zodiac who gave himself the nickname claimed to have killed 37 people total truth, probably somewhere in the middle. Yeah, probably. They like, they like to exaggerate. Oh yeah. Or it's just the, what what I say? Four, five of them? Five of them have been linked? Yeah. So he throws out, oh, no, it's 37. I'll get 37. Right. Yeah. There have been numerous suspects over the years, but the case is still very much open. In 2021, a group of private crime-solving enthusiasts. That's like us. Yeah, it's like us. But actually go out and investigate. <laughs> they claimed to have identified the Zodiac. Oh. As Gary Francis Posty, P-O-S-T-E. Post. They're right. Mm. Throwing that stuff out there like that. I'm going to say Post. Post died in prison in 2018, but Mm. not before being interviewed by police who declined to comment on the self described elite team's claim to have wrapped up the case. Elite team? That's what they're calling the the, the, the true crime enthusiast group that figured this out. Okay. Elite team. Okay. I'll have to look them up. Now, we, I mean, come on. This has to be number one. Jack the Ripper. Yeah. I mean, right? That's like the number one unsolved case ever. Right. Well, and oldest that we know of. Yeah. Uh, Arguably, he's the most famous serial killer of all time. It could be because he committed his crime so long ago in 1888. They're so far removed from current times that no one connected to the case is still alive, which makes it. I always thought he was like a doctor. Oh, yeah. The way he did the. Yeah. Jack the Ripper is often credited with jump-starting the modern serial killer fixation. So Jack the Ripper is really the reason we're doing the show in a roundabout way is what this is saying. True, yeah. He murdered at least five women in London's East End. Uh, and no, they likely were not all prostitutes. Okay. It's interesting. Yeah. The murders kept London on edge, especially as the police questioned men in professions ranging from butchers to surgeons to barbers. Okay but failed to produce a credible suspect. During Jack the Ripper's time frame, police and authorities received hundreds of letters signed by Jack the Ripper. So he was one like to write oh, letters yeah. to the he police to, too. Yeah, yeah. While most were frauds, though, at least four letters likely were from the Ripper himself, including the infamous From Hell letter okay. that inspired fiction ranging from comic books to Hollywood movies. Have you ever seen that movie From Hell? 
I haven't seen it. it, it I mean, it's I about, talk about it. Yeah. yeah, it's a good, it's a good one. Yeah. Check it out. Yeah. Okay. Given that most of the police records on the case were destroyed in World War II bombings. Okay. See, that just makes that all the more mysterious too. No one's alive still that yeah. had any part in the case. Hmm. All the evidence and documents are destroyed in World War II bombings. Yeah, thanks to Hitler. Right. Thanks, Hitler. Yeah. Way to go. Uh, it's likely that the case will never be solved. I don't yeah, think it will be. It will be. But that doesn't stop amateur sleuths from pointing the finger in all directions. Oh, yeah. Of course, ranging from author Lewis Carroll. Oh. I didn't know he was a suspect. Me neither. <laughs> hmm. I, I say uh, him and going next. Uh, also, two men linked to Queen Victoria. Oh. Her surgeon, John Williams, and her grandson, and her presumptive to the throne, Prince Albert Victor. See, I think it was a doctor. You think so? Mm-hmm. I think it was someone that wanted to be a doctor. Okay. And was... Failed out of medical school, maybe? Maybe. But you know what I mean? Like, a surgeon gets to cut people every day. So what? what's the fascination with cutting people? You just know at work tomorrow, that's what you're going to do. Well, I feel yeah, like this is someone... saving lives. He wanted to see what it was like on the other side. Maybe he had a fetish. That could be. I just kind of figured it was someone that wanted to see what it's like to cut people. Could be. You know? Yeah. Maybe they didn't have cats to dissect like they do in most medical schools and stuff. Oh, like modern day or, medical? Or a cadaver, whatever they give you. Yeah. So he was pra- he's a surgeon that was practicing is what you're saying? Yeah, it could be. I don't know. I mean, I have no idea. Yeah, I, I know. know. Should we uh, play the Wheel of Death? Well, I don't know why we wouldn't. All righty, all righty. Am, am I drawn? We have the Bucket of Doom. Oh, hang on. Let me make this really cool. The Bucket of Doom. Why do you get to do that? I don't know. Will it not do top? Hello, 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 hello. I didn't do that. Voice doesn't, oh, it's didn't do that. Yeah. It's bull- <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> Such bullshit. We're changing chairs one day. <laughs> we should. All right, bucket to do. Mike, draw us a name. We got. We're getting more and more every day. If you'd like to add your name into the bucket of doom to play the wheel of death, sign up on our website, twomurdermorons.com. You'll see the sign up there. Hey, I got Vicky. We got Vicky. 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 All right, let's get Vicky on the line and play the wheel of wheel death. death. Vicky! Vicky! How's it going? I'm so excited. Are you excited? Oh my God, a little bit, yeah. Oh man, we love Vicky. Mike, oh, yeah. if you're not clear, Vicky, first of all, we have to say thank you for yeah, being an executive you, producer. You. That yep. is awesome of you. And, I'm putting uh, it on my resume. Oh, hey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, first. Well, we appreciate you being a Buy Me a Coffee member. We also appreciate you signing up to play the Wheel of Death. We're excited to have you on the show. Yep. I'm more excited. <laughs> and, thanks, excited. and thank you, too, for commenting on all our videos. We really appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah. So I know that you are clear on how the Wheel of Death works, but for people watching for the first time, we're going to explain it a little bit. Yeah. This here is our Wheel of Death. On it, um, we've eliminated some of the death spaces. So there's only two death spaces on here now. So you only have two chances to lose at this. And everywhere else, there's fun stuff like T-shirts and uh, what do we got? Coffee, uh, gift cards to our merch shop, hats, posters. You're already a member. So if you land on one of the free membership spots, we'll probably give her another shot to spin. What do you think? We'll let her have a choice. Or just let her pick? Yeah. Yeah, that works. That sound good to you? Yeah, let her pick. Okay. Yeah. He said, yeah, "Yeah, let her pick. (laughs) All right, yeah. uh, do you want uh, myself or do you want Mike to spin the wheel for you? Who feels lucky and generous? Ooh. I just, I just, I just spent. Bef- I spin the wheel before and I landed on death. Yeah, so it wasn't very lucky. Mike does have a pretty bad track record of this. Yes, I'm I like, know. I'm like a magnet. <laughs> <laughs> bad things. Andy, you're up. Okay, yeah, I'm up. up. All right, there we go. You just want me to give it all I got? You ain't got much. Yeah. Sure. We okay. want a death. We want ice. The wheel of death T-shirt more than anything. Oh, that's in what the you're world. Going for. That's, that's the best thing to have. Heck yeah! And we've been um, giving that away a lot lately. Oh, we haven't. <laughs> Mike disagrees. I will try my best to get you that wheel of death shirt. Okay. All right. Here we go. You holding on, Mike? Yep. All right. Peace is. That was a good spin. Good spin. Good spin. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, oh my oh, God, wait Vicky! Wait wait oh, oh. oh, it's on the wheel of death shirt. <laughs> Holy cow! You got the wheel of death shirt. Hey! <laughs> you got the wheel of death shirt. Congratulations, Vicky! 
Great. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. I will be in contact with you after we're done recording tonight uh, to get your information, and we'll get that T-shirt on its way to you. Yep. Fabulous. Thank you. Thank you no very no much, problem. Vicky. Thanks for calling in and playing the Wheel of Death on Two Murder Morons. Yep. Thanks for, uh, Thank you for having me. This. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good evening, Vicky. Too. Bye. Bye. Okay. Okay. That was a good one. Wheel of Death shirt. I know, right? Yeah. Huh. Well, we, we didn't have that board. <laughs> just it's kind of just did a back, kind of like, did it like a backspin. I know that board just kind of sprung right off that dust spot. Yeah, didn't it? yeah. I was getting ready to take it off of all. You move it, you know. And all of a sudden, next I know it's <laughs> moving again. Right, right. We Holy. must have ghosts in the studio must or something. Be something. Somebody we talked about on a case mm -hmm. helping Vicky out. We brought them in there, and they won't leave. Right. <laughs> They're here to stay. Here to stay. Well, Vicky, again, congratulations on your Wheel of Death shirt. Yep. Uh, we'll get that to you here shortly. Yep. Thanks for playing. Yeah, definitely. All right. What do we got to talk about? Oh, if you want to support the show, did I scare you? No. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. It took me back. <laughs> if you uh, enjoyed this episode, you want to support the show, want to become a producer of the show, head to our website, twomurdermorons.com, or go straight to buymeacoffee.com slash twomurdermorons. You can find out there for as little as $3 a month. That's it. Three dollars. Three bucks. You can get our bonus episodes. Yep. Which we have a quite a few. Pretty good library of those going. We do. Now. Yeah. Um, you get bonus episodes. You get you know different levels. You get your name on the screen mm -hmm. on the yep. website. All that good stuff. Discounts on merch. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have that new private Facebook group. Your private face your which Facebook you, group. You can be, be a part be of. Part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Shoot the shit with us. Yeah. Yeah. Or so. something new about whatever. Yeah. Whatever we want to talk about. So buy me a coffee.com slash two murder morons or click the QR code on your screen. Yeah, or you can just buy us a one time coffee if that's all you want. Oh, that's to do. true. Yeah. You can just get on there and do like a one time, one -time little, hey, yeah. nice job, guys. I have a hundred bucks worth of coffee. And then Mike and I get to fight over who gets the Starbucks. That's right. <laughs> the, the Starbucks. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Another I, way to support the show. I get short shit at everything. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mike. All right. I'm going to bring my own little mic megaphone in. Right. <laughs> Another way to support the show is our merch store. Merch. We got all we got kinds merch. of cool we got stuff. Tons of stuff. Uh, shirts, hoodies, hats, underwear, AirPod cases, puzzles. Puzzles. Uh, dog hoodies. Coffee. Coffee. Crime coffee. Crime oh, coffee. yeah. We're so bring it out. Bring it out. I feel like we haven't talked about the crime coffee yeah, here in a little We always forget. Yeah, we got, the, we got our little crime row. Crime roast. Crime roast. Crime roasters. Yeah, crime, roasters. crime coffee. Delicious. I love. Got a nice little story on the oh. back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a, yeah. One, of our, we show one, that? one of our stories. Yeah. We, we put different uh, true crime stories on the back. Yep. Get you some, get you some crime coffee. Yeah, get some crime coffee. Yeah. Maybe while you watch our show. Yeah. Yeah. What else we got to talk about? I feel like I'm forgetting something. Uh, we talked about our last episode. Our last episode? Of the season. Oh, wow. yeah. We're talking about how we're doing a live September we did, we 18th. about that already? Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. Where's oh, yeah. That? That was, been it's, like, yeah. it's those medications, man. They're kicking in. It's been a long work day. It's okay. I get it, man. I get it. Yeah, I didn't work, but yeah. <laughs> it's, it's been a hard retirement day for Mike. It, yeah. It's been bad. Rough, rough. <laughs> I got bruises and everything. Well, thank you all very much for tuning in. Again, please like, subscribe, uh, click the notification bell, and share. Tell your, friends, tell your friends about us. Yeah. yeah that that would help word. us out. Yeah. Anything. Anything. And definitely, when we get a chance, stop by our website, tumormorons.com. There's all kinds of good stuff on there. You can watch, listen to episodes right there on the website. Yep. So we will see you guys for our second to last. Second to last. Season two season. episode. Next week. Next week on next Wednesday. Yep. All right. Thank you, guys. See you. Thanks, guys.